Alright guys, there's been some like plug-in drama about the new boss, so let's check it out. This one's from No Monkey. Check them out in the description. If you want to see the full Jagex video. has just had Runelight remove the plugins, visual sounds, and watchdog alerts. In this video, I'll go over what each of these plugins did in game, an overview of Jagex's rules on plugins, and how current plugins weigh in comparison. The reason Yeah. O OSRS is a plug-in heavy game, just like Minecraft, guys. C4 isn't using a ton of plugins when he plays. The reason given for removal was, it effectively allows you to be told what prayer to use based on game sounds, which is a direct violation of our policy. I couldn't find- Guys, doesn't, uh... Doesn't Jad also tell us to do it? But not with a plugin, guys. Dang, so we can't use it at Jad no more then. Basically. <laughs> that sucks. Find a reason on GitHub for the removal of watchdog alerts. Simply that. But that that sucks because what if somebody's deaf, bro? What if somebody's deaf, and they're using the plugin to um, you know, so, uh, for like game sounds and stuff, bro? What's gonna happen with them, man? That sucks. The Jagex had requested it be pulled. They're they're, they're gonna have no way to tell, basically, no way to tell at all. But yeah, you do need the plugins here. Like, all these tiles do meet, need to be marked when you're playing. Uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff. Just for, like, you know, so you don't make mistakes while bossing. Visual Sounds is a plugin that shows the IDs of sounds that the game plays on screen. It can show everything from you hitting a goblin with a scythe to the ambient sound of magic trees. The most common use for this plugin was finding sounds players don't want to hear and muting them with Annoyance Meet plugin, or swapping the sounds for something else with the Sound Swapper plugin. This plugin also had the feature of allowing you to color code specifically filtered sounds as they fire with unique colors. The main purpose of this was to benefit deaf players so they could still see attacks even if they couldn't hear the sound cue. So that, yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. I'm sure a lot of players are actually deaf. It's a huge game, guys. A decent amount. Hopefully not a lot. The colors were customizable for the sake of colorblind players, allowing them to change difficult to distinguish attack pattern colors. Recently, I used the Visual Sounds plugin on stream to attempt one of the hardest challenges in all of RuneScape, killing Awakened Leviathan without stunning him with Shadow Barrage. Leviathan's attacks ramp up constantly throughout the fight, getting faster and faster. These attacks ramp to the point they are so fast, the engine cannot fire them any faster at one tick per attack orb. The attacks need the prayer active, the exact same tick they are fired, to block them. We call this zero tick because it effectively gives less than a tick to react to the prayers. I filtered the sound- Dang bro, looks like a fairly hard boss, but now we know that you just use range it seems, and like a shadow barrage with no mage gear. Guys, I have not done, done the quest, so- Sound for each of the Levi- We still gotta do Dr Dragon Slayer too, man. Python's attacks each of which has a unique sound cue, and placed the ID box directly over my prayers to give me the least eye movement from attack to my prayers. I also swapped each of his sound cues for their equivalent offensive prayer with Sound Swapper to give clear indication of what prayers were firing. After roughly 10 hours of attempts and 16 hours of total practice, I managed to get his health down to 44%. I spent roughly 600 mil on orbs to attempt these kills. Oh snap, you gotta pay. Dang, bro. There. <laughs> hey. Uh, uh. In addition, that's a lot of GP, right, guys? Watchdog plugin was removed. This plugin plays custom sound alerts when various things happen. No. Guys, does that mean we can't have um the C engineer thing go off no more when you die? Oh my gosh, bro. The C engineer plugin. It's kind of ruined now, man. Things like an NPC spawning. As I'm not, they don't usually remove that many plugins, guys. What is going on? Or a message in chat. I attempted to use this plugin to alert me when the tornado on Leviathan was about to spawn. It spawns at 50% HP, but the plugin was not capable of this. The only thing I used it for was this. A leech has spawned. A leech has spawned. A leech has spawned. A leech has spawned. You did it? Okay, new skirt. GZ. Dang, bro. Visual sound IDs is very similar to subtitle mode in Minecraft. It shows exactly what is happening on screen, even with very faint audio cues you wouldn't normally be able to hear. 
This feature is meant for the hearing impaired, but Minecraft speedrunners use this to locate things like lava or specific mobs they wouldn't normally be able to hear without cranking their volume. So this is perfectly now, legal in um, Minecraft. Half now, it half later. the playing fields wow. and doesn't rely on hearing extremely faint audio mm -hmm. cues. Yeah, All right. Wait, nah, let me do it as you want. All players can simply see this information at all times. As stated earlier, all this plugin is play that legal in again. Minecraft. It evens the playing Yeah, it's legal in Minecraft, guys. Why is Jagex cracking down on it, man? ...fields and doesn't rely on hearing extremely faint audio cues. All players can simply see this information at all times. As stated earlier, all this plugin does is tell you when an audio cue begins and can color code what it is. It cannot provide information early or tell you exactly what to Guys, does the boss even drop like extra drops? Is it or is it just doing it for like QA testing? Because doesn't it just draw the blood torva pieces? I don't think you need that many blood torva pieces, right guys? To pray. It does not predict prayers or catch them for you. It provides the same information you've already been provided in game. An audio cue has started, and this is what it is. It recontextualizes information you have already been displayed in a different format. It does not provide additional information. Many people have claimed this is equivalent to using a plugin like Guitar Hero, which was a plugin on third-party clients in the past that would provide on-screen descending note bars that would land on your prayers and tell you exactly what to pray. Oh, okay, that's why they banned the third-party plugin. That's also debatable whether I think, you know, it's even good for the game or not, guys. You know what I mean? Somebody's having difficulty with like a boss or something. Hey, that could help. You know what I mean? Visual sound IDs cannot do this. It can tell you a sound cue has fired and that's the end of it. You can see here earlier in my Leviathan kills, I have the plugin, but don't even look at it because all it does is tell me when an attack has fired, not what to pray. If I blindly click my prayers here, I would die instantly. The only time this plugin is useful is when an attack is being fired and needs to be caught within the same tick. The only boss that does this currently is Leviathan. Guys, I'm not the best at PVMing here, so just uh, bear with me. I'm not, uh, I can't give the best analysis, like a uh, review of this, but I am trying, okay, guys. I've also seen this compared to the Demonic Gorilla plugin or Zolra Helper. These plugins told you what to pray ahead of time, which is very different from simply reading the attack. Snap, did they remove those? That has already begun. This plugin could not be used at JADs and JAD challenges because only the magic attack has a sound cue. It cannot be used for any mobs in Inferno, as the sound happens as damage is calculated. It can't be used at Hunya for the exact same reason. It cannot be used at any location an attack is calculated and prayer must be activated ahead of time. Only really at Le Leviathan, guys. Why the way they make it like that then? The only thing it could really be used for is telling you what attack type is queued at places like Verzik P3 or, 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 or these bosses, I apologize, and Nightmare. It can tell you the boss is currently using a ranged or magic attack. These already have distinct visual and audio cues, so this isn't additional information being displayed, only confirmation with IDs. Watchdog gave me no tactical advantage. It was just a funny plugin for stream. Why were these plugins pulled? It could be for various reasons. I know, right, guys? Come on. Yeah. Where's the player support, bro? It's the engineer. No more. No more, uh, you know, dying on the hardcore completed, basically. When you. If you know what I mean? It could be the indicator on top of the inventory removes the need to look at the boss entirely, which makes it not okay. Thanks. Was it removed because it gives a small tactical advantage in very niche environments? Was it removed because it's specifically a visual indicator that gives an advantage? Why was Watchdog removed? Are custom audio cues no longer allowed? A leech has spawned. What about Sound Swapper and similar plugins, which are still on the plugin hub? Took a look at the old rules page. They published this on the first of June, twenty twenty-two. This comes. Yeah, I, I I saw this on my recommended on Twitter, man. I was like, "What is going on, fam?" Sided with the banning of all third-party clients. Described here are rules that are extremely vague and all-encompassing, allowing Jagex to pick and choose. 
Ultimately, they have say what they want in the game, but I, I feel for like the dead players, you know what I mean? Banning specific plugins. They offer- Maybe they'll, maybe they'll add it back. They have went back on their decision before with banning on Odoblock, right guys? No clarification and very generalizing broad terms. The rule I found that Watchdog likely falls under is adds additional visual or audio indicators of a boss mechanic except in cases where this is a manually triggered external helper. There are a lot of other rules, but Watchdog doesn't really fit under any of these. For fun, I went through Runelight and found as many plugins that technically break this rule but are currently allowed. 32 of them off the bat blatantly break Jagex's rough outline of rule breaking of provides audio or visual indicators in boss encounters. The ones that break it the hardest and most convenient. Dang, bro, he did his research on that one, man. Convincingly are Tob QL, Cox Editions, and Tombs of a Masket, all of which provide massive amounts of assistance within raid encounters. Now, I'm not saying I want these removed. The point is to show that there is not a clearly defined line being drawn with these rules, and Jagex has left it purposefully vague in order to pick and choose offending plugins. If one should be allowed, they should all be allowed, or the rules need to be updated and provide more clarification for future plugin creation. Similarly, I found the rule that applies to visual sounds. Indicates which prayer to use in any combat situation. The definition of indicate is to show, point, or make clear in another way. Jagex's rulebook is so vague and broad that there is no show or clear. What counts as indicating something? If indicating a sound cue is indicating what to pray, are the visual metronome custom square plugins on the I literally made a uh, Leviathan harder for him, guys. Screen indicating what prayer to use? Same thing with audio metronome. This indicates what to pray on a given tick if you count it. Both can be used to solve pillar stacks. Sorry guys, let me uh, drink. Like he keeps dying at the boss it seems now, right guys? Literally cost him 600 mil. And Inferno when configured accordingly. If these plugins were removed, you also wouldn't be able to use them to assist in various skilling applications. Sepulchre, tick manipulation within woodcutting and hunter, blackjacking, construction. Tob QL can change the shape of Sodatseg's prayer orbs to the shape of blob attacks from Inferno, which are much larger and have clearer color indications. These provide much clearer visual graphics for what to pray and what the attacks are. You could argue under this as a, that's a plugin I would use, actually, you know what I mean? Roll that this is in violation. Cox additions can replace Ohm's prayer orbs with Warden P2 special attacks, making them much more obvious and giving them a shape instead of only color distinction. Cox Vanguards also adds color indications of their attack style and reset thresholds for each Vanguard. These also could be argued as rule breakers. A common complaint with Desert Treasure- No, no, man, don't, don't snitch about it, man. They might remove those ones as well, bro. You know what I mean? We can't, we can't have more plugins change like that. Twos of Ardorvis' Awakened version has no clear indication of his mage and range prayer head attacks, as they are both blue and extremely close to the same shape. If a plugin were to come out in the future that recolored Awakened Vardorvis' attacks to be green and blue instead of both blue, would this also be in violation? What is and isn't allowed? Many of the other rules seem archaic and outdated as well. One example being, makes it easier to target 3D entities with a spell by removing some options. This seems clearly targeted at casting Barrage at other players. For some reason, removing the option to cast Barrage on players outside of the wilderness is specifically against the rules. I don't understand what skill is added having this remain in the game outside of frustration and annoyance, but it is definitely a strange one. Wait, so is it able to use in PvP or not PvP, guys? I'm, I can't. AoE indicators is also something I'm always personally frustrated with. I have. He's trying to dare rock it, guys. What? My classic skull AoE marked in ground markers outside of TOA showing the area of Warden P2 AoE attack that hits in a 7x7 seven seven AoE, I thought that was like a type of game, bro. <laughs> grid that is in I'm sorry, guys. This guy's like an elite PVMer, man. It's a whole different stage, but I, I do understand the gist of it, you know what I mean? Indicated by a single, small, 
Shadow, that is obscured by thralls, the boss, and even inside the obelisk itself. There's many other annoying examples of area of effect attacks being poorly indicated. Lizardman Shaman Blobs, Ulm's Crystal Bombs and Falling Crystals, Vasa Projectile Rock Attacks, Grotesque Guardian Rocks. All of these have AoE attacks that are visually a 1x1 one one indicator for a 3x3 three three or greater grid of tiles. These should have better indicators in general, but allowing Runelike to customize these visuals until more dev time can be allocated seems more than fair. Uh, I agree, I agree. Removing plugins because of a rare niche use case that I happen to find and removing the use of said plugin for the entire community, including those with disabilities like lack of hearing and colorblindness. Jagex, please reverse his decision if you ever see this guy. We gotta help out players with disabilities, I think. Is wrong. Like, they, they added, they, they changed a random event to help um colorblind people, you know. But this is, this is for deaf people, guys. Oh. Like... Regardless of my opinion or stance on plugins and their place in the game, preventing people from using accessibility features without carefully considering the ramifications of that decision is incredibly short-sighted and impulsive. Punishing the entire community because of the lack of clean lines drawn in the rules is not only frustrating, it's simply unfair to everyone. In the future, Jagex should review and clearly define what is acceptable or not. I mean, it's hard for them to, like, to do that. Because, you know, you gotta put out a really long list of stuff that, you know... And they already made a decent-sized list of everything they don't want, but... I'm still not on the side of them, I think they should revert it, but yeah. ...with plugin developers and players. It shouldn't be a guessing game. Plugins should not be cherry-picked based on whims and vague explanations, favoritism, but on a solid foundation of guidelines. That's it for the video! Alright guys, let's see a look at a few comments here. I can totally see Jagex removing those plugins now. I'm gonna get time type of dude just Jagex can remove any plugin for for any reason that's an agreement for keeping room light. And then say what kind of plugins will be likely removed. And it plugins that tell him not to pray during a boss fight and then says the game is too easy. Uh oh. Jagex guidelines, quote unquote, adds additional visual or audio indicators of a boss mechanic. No monkey provides audio or visual indicators of in boss encounters. I wonder what he's going to do about all the people we banned on Twitch for calling him a cheater. Oh, snap. So not everybody's on his side here, it seems. This was a plug-in. Was intended for. Yeah, but they're not... They're um, avoiding the point, like... That, you know, deaf people are going to have problems. If the plug-in isn't OP, then no stun Leviathan shouldn't be a problem. Guys, comment section seems to be, uh, you know, split on this. I think the simplest way to talk about it is that let the plugins that help you plan an encounter are fine, while the plugins that tell you what to do during the encounter are not. Things like tile markers and metronomes don't tell you what you need to do in a fight, just assist you in a prepared plan. I haven't done any Lathanian lot. Yeah, looking at your screen, I can tell what a single mar tile marker you done is set is for. I can tell, sure as heck, tell what player prayer you need to click on. Okay, so let me know what you think about this below. Check them out in the description. I'll see you guys next one. Peace out, everyone.